Hi everyone, welcome to the final part of data architecture interview series. This video will focus on 10 data governance interview questions and answers. This video will not only benefit those who are preparing for their data architecture interview, but also for those who are preparing for data governance and data quality manager or analyst roles. So let's dig into it. So our very first question is, why do we need data governance? You would be surprised to know how often this question is asked that too as a starting point. The intent of asking this question is this being a new field if you are aware of pain points that led to the creation. Our answer should also focus on those pain points. Please note that some pointers and my explanation may be a repeat from my other videos on data governance but I wanted to have the best of all in this video for you to have a one stop preparation. So to answer this, first and most important one, no single source of truth. What was happening in organizations in early last decade was that values of same data elements in different systems were different. This was due to several reasons like delays in feeds, updates not flowing properly, systems out of sync, etc. This is called multiple versions of truth. Hence, there was a need to mark certain systems authorized to provide a particular business data when there were multiple systems having the same information. This brings us to the second challenge. Although there were clearly defined application or system owners, there were no defined data owners. Hence, if there was a data issue, no one knew who should be fixing it or who would be taking the responsibility of it, often leading to chaos and even monetary losses at times. Third. There was no defined purpose or importance of data set or data element to an organization. This often hindered critical decision making. Hence, there was a need to define meaning and context of the data. And finally, regulatory compliance. Regulators in lot of countries have asked data lineage to be maintained and data quality controls mandatorily put for key business elements. Next question is, what is life cycle of data in the system organization that you have worked with? Okay, the intent of asking this question is simple. Whether you understand how is data created and destroyed. So to answer this, we can say that data is sourced from source systems and is provisioned to target systems. Data is created by users using the system. They also maintain it and use the data for business purposes. Finally, once data is served its purpose or if there is a regulated requirement like GDPR, data is either archived or purged. Next question is a bit technical and must for a data architect. How would you define an in-house data lineage system? Okay. This question was asked to me by a large bank. The intent here is to judge your designing skills. If this is something that an organization is keen on building, then please expect follow up questions on this, which can take you deeper into the concept. So check out my exclusive video on data lineage to do more. It's only a eight minute video. So to answer this, there are two ways. First one is an annotator based approach where you would ask the developers to use annotations on existing code and set up a process to mandatorily add annotators to a new code. You can then use traversal techniques to walk the annotators and draw the lineage. The advantage is that it's one of the most easiest and le least expensive way to solve such a complex problem. But the disadvantage of this method is that since it's dependent on developers manually adding annotators, it's prone to errors or misses. Second method is code parser based approach, which is a complex one, but it's very effective if done right. You would need to first write a generic code scanner to scan code across different languages. Next, you would need to write a language parser, one for each language that you want to parse. You can use a grammar file to tokenize. Finally, you will have to use traversal techniques to walk the tokens and pick relevant nodes followed by graph theory algorithms to connect the dots. 
नेक्स्ट थ्री क्वेश्चन आर रिपीट ऑफ वॉट आई हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन माई मेटा डेटा मैनेजमेंट वीडियो सो इफ यू हैव सीन इट ऑलरेडी यू कैन स्किप अहेड टू क्वेश्चन थर्टी सेवन दीज थ्री आर इलेस्ट्रेशन बेस्ड क्वेश्चन विच विद रियल वर्ल्ड एग्जाम्पल्स द क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज मेटा डेटा कैन यू एक्सप्लेन विद रियल एग्जाम्पल्स इट इज वेल एस्टैब्लिश दैट अ मेटा डेटा इज डेटा ऑफ डेटा और डेटा अबाउट डेटा वॉट डज दिस एग्जैक्टली मीन so imagine a table which stores due amount on credit cards and has columns like card id customer name and due amount if i were to locate this field 1500 dollars and curious about its properties how would i do so i can locate this field by its column table schema and a database server further if i want to know what's the business meaning or relevance of this field i can access its data domain line of business business name and business definition and if i want to understand if this data can be trusted or not i can see the information about the data quality checks that are applied on this field this first piece on how to locate this field is called technical metadata the second piece which help us understand its business meaning is called business metadata and the third piece is called operational metadata of course metadata can be much more than these listed attributes which we will cover shortly finally metadata management is all about capturing recording and maintaining metadata i will cover next two questions together due to continued illustration these questions are how is metadata recorded in your organization and how is data cataloging achieved now let's discuss how is metadata recorded at enterprise level in organizations data governance council usually formulate standards that every line of business would follow in order to capture metadata we will discuss a very generic version of this so there could be multiple hierarchies or levels depending upon an organization let's consider a simple one where we have a line of business applications feed and data elements also known as physical data elements in some organizations for simplicity consider this table has three data elements consider another table or feed with three additional data elements additionally a data lineage for one hop per record can be documented with source and target values along with transformation on the hops if you would like to more about how like to know more about how is uh, data lineage recorded and what is data lineage and, and about hops please do check my other video on data lineage in this very series i have explained there how organizations record data lineage with help of an illustration so how is business information derived from these ideally a business name and definition should be discovered first and based on that physical models or data elements should be derived but data governance and metadata management are relatively newer concepts hence there exists millions of data elements without business information and hence we are discussing mapping technical metadata to business metadata instead of the other way around so let's say a cust id maps to or becomes a customer identifier please note how the short forms and underscores have vanished yes the business name should always be a meaningful english word or a phrase similarly cust underscore name becomes customer name and card underscore num becomes card number now for the second table we have card underscore number which is essentially is same as card underscore num because it holds the same data and is a foreign key to the previous table hence this will get mapped to the same business element as before a business element to data element is usually a one to many mapping 
A particular data element can exist in hundreds of instances within systems, all having the same business meaning. Hence, it is a wise idea to map all these data elements to one business name rather than creating multiple business names. And finally, we map rest of the two data elements as well. Next, a very important exercise is that of identifying key data element known as critical data element in some organizations. These are usually fields that are important or critical to business and needs to be reported to a regulator. This entire process is called data cataloging. Next, we have three questions on data quality. Believe it or not, but data quality is one of the most important topic that interviewers love to ask for any data related rule. This is this could be because it is always a number one pain point and they are themselves looking for fresh perspective from candidates. So the question here is what all different types of data quality checks are you aware of? Can you explain with examples? A way to answer this question differently is by giving real world examples with each of the checks. That's what we will do. So start with saying data quality checks can be applied at either feed table level or at a column level. First one can be accuracy check, which can include duplicate records check or a th threshold constraint. Example is if a value is expected to be in the numeric range of zero to one. And if it is 1.2, the check should fail. Reconciliation is another type of accuracy check. This type of check is typically at column level. Next, we can have completeness check where data is compared before and after a movement. Typical example here is row count check or the most popular one null check. Next, we can have a consistency check. An example can be a record, record count validation and format, format check. Like if social security number adheres to 10 digits or has two hyphens. Next, we can have a reasonable check. Best example of this is column count check. If eight columns are expected in a feed, which is agreed upon, and if seven columns are re received, then the check will fail. Next, we can have a timeliness check. Example is SLA for a feed. And finally, uniqueness check can help us find if there is duplicate record. Next data quality question is, if budget is a constraint, where all will you apply and not apply data quality in a data warehouse? Too many data quality checks would slow down a system and cause delays in provisioning the data. Hence, picking where to add a data quality check and where not to becomes important and hence an interview question. Ideally, if transformation exists, it makes sense to add a data quality check there. Also, if there are data joins from multiple sources or feeds, one should apply a data quality check there. On the other hand, column level checks can be avoided during load to stage as the idea of stage is to have a copy of source data as is. Also, for straight moves, data quality checks can be avoided if there are budget constraints or performance issues. Next up and our final data quality question is, how do you measure data quality? Okay, the answer is data quality metrics, but the interviewer here wants to know if you can identify the parameters that would make up a DQ metric. Few of these parameters could be number of nulls received, ratio of errors against the entire records or set in percentage, number of values that were needed to be fixed or updated manually, number of threshold failures like values exceeding certain uh, bounds and daily variance in load times. And last question of this interview series, question number 40 is data protection related question. What all data classification types exist in your organization? This question can particularly be asked if the role has some regulatory mention. So we typically have public, confidential, internal data, meaning internal to the organization, 
restricted as in only few people would enhance job requirements or with clearance have access to that data and mostly in trend personally identifiable information or simply PII like social security number in US, NHS number in UK and Aadhaar number in India etc. So that's all in this interview series. All the very best for your interviews. I'm sure you will crack it. If you have missed the first three parts, the links are in the description. If you would like to see more such interview series, then let me know in the comments box which one. If you like this video and had a good learning experience, then do check out our other videos. Do like and share. Also subscribe the channel for latest videos and trends in the world of technology and architecture. See you in the next video.